Hey, a &P students. Time for lab number six, which is another histology lab. It is on connective tissues. We just did lab number five, where we looked at four different connective tissues. Today, we're going to look at two connective tissues that are known as supporting connective tissues. For, obvious, for an obvious reason, they support something in your body. And the two tissues we're going to look at today are a type of cartilage called hyalin cartilage and also bone. Now, what we're looking at here is hyalin cartilage. The word hyalin means it is kind of shiny and glassy. You don't really see that in the microscopy, but one of the places you find this type of cartilage, this hyalin cartilage, is in is at your movable joints. So where two bones that are have a mobile joint meet, this cartilage is there to form kind of like a a squishy, flexible spot that can provide support but yet deal with impact and stretching and pulling and compression and all the forces that might be there. So Highland cartilage, if you want to see some, I suggest you go and get yourself a delicious piece of fried chicken. That's an ugly looking chicken leg right there. And I want you to eat all the chicken. I want you to just destroy the chicken, okay? So you are left with like nothing but the chicken bone. And on the end of that bone, there is going to be a piece of cartilage on the end of that bone. And it's kind of shiny looking, kind of glossy looking. And it's hyalin cartilage. So we find it in our joints, okay, We all in our movable joints. We also find it in our respiratory tract. If you play with your trachea, if you touch your trachea, you should feel the rings of cartilage there that keep it open, keep it nice and wide. Those are hyaline cartilage rings. If you find your ribs and you walk on your ribs towards your sternum, you might be able to feel the hyaline cartilage linking your ribs to your sternum. So they're in your, it's in your thoracic cage. It's in other places as well. Now do me a favor. Recall from lab number five that connective tissues are almost always mostly made of matrix. Mostly made of extracellular matrix, ECM. And we see a lot of ECM here. We do see some cells, the purple guys, but then all this between them is extracellular matrix. This extracellular matrix has is got a ton of collagen in it. It's hard to see the individual collagen fibers the way we could last time, but trust me, it's there. And there's also a good amount of water. So water plus collagen gives me squishiness, flexibility, strength, and the ability to resist forces in many directions. Okay, the cells that we see here, so all these little nuclei belong to cells that are known as chondrocytes. Chondro, cartilage, site cell. These are mature, quiescent cells. Quiescent meaning they don't do much. They're basically at rest. Once upon a time, these chondrocytes were these active cells called chondroblasts, which translates for us as cartilage makers. So the chondroblasts make all the matrix, and then they quiet down, and they just chill out. Now, the little cavity in which a chondrocyte sits, so here I have just a little ca cavity. The chondrocyte is, you know, off the screen somewhere, front or back. And the little cavity where the chondrocyte sits, each of them is called a lacuna. Many are lacunae. So the little, they're the little lakes in which a chondrocyte sits. It's called a lacuna. 
So this is Highland cartilage. It'll almost always have this pinkish, purplish color to it. This is the matrix, lots of collagen, lots of water. We see chondrocytes spread out. Each chondrocyte is usually hanging out in its own lacuna. Sometimes you might have a pair right next to each other like that. And these chondrocytes were once chondroblasts, which back in the day made the cartilage matrix. All right. Here's another more purpley example of hyaline cartilage. I want you to find the ECM, chondrocytes, and lacunae. So do that for me. Okay. And now we're on to bone. Sweet. We spent five minutes doing cartilage. We're going to spend the rest of the time. The rest of the hour. Oh, I'm just joking. Hopefully not an hour. Um, the rest of the time is bone. Bone is hard. Bone is this hard, mineralized, supporting connective tissue. It's mineralized, meaning, as you might have guessed, it has minerals in it. The major minerals are calcium and phosphorus. So you have this stuff called calcium phosphate that is in your bones. And it's as hard, it makes it hard. Hard connective tissue. Hardness is great. Think about the hardness of your skull that's good for protection. Hardness is also good. Think about the hardness of your bones as you, as you compress them. How often do you compress your bones? Seriously. All the time. If you stand up, you are carrying your weight. You are compressing your leg bones. You got to be strong to be able to do that. What we have here, I got two pictures here for you actually. The picture on the left, this guy over here, that is the back of a femur. It's the back of a femur right there. And this femur has an end to it. It's got a, a rounded end right here. And it's got a shaft. The shaft has to resist compression. So resist getting squished by your weight. The bone tissue is built to do that. Structure matches function. Now what they've done here is see this little slice they're making here? This little piece of pie right here? This little piece of pie is this model right here. This is a wedge of what's called compact bone tissue. Compact meaning it doesn't have any big gross spaces, like spaces visible to the naked eye. It's got microscopic spaces, which is what we're seeing here. So this is compact bone tissue from the shaft of a bone. It's actually a type of bone called a long bone. Long bones are much longer than they are wide. So your arm bones, finger bones, hand bones, leg bones, toe bones, those are long bones. Okay, when we look at this model, what I want you to see and appreciate are the targets, the bullseyes. So I'm going to put a circle around what I'm calling a target or a bullseye. Da -da -da. Wrap that guy around like that. Right there. That's what I'm calling a target. A bullseye. Look at how it is made of one, two, three. Wait, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings of matrix. These rings are concentric, meaning they share the same center. The center of the first ring is also the center of the second, and so on and so on, like a bullseye. All right. I see lots of these other bullseyes. It's like this compact bone is made almost entirely of these bullseyes. Now, I, w I know you're wondering, what are these bullseyes called? Well, each of these bullseyes, each of these cylinders is called an osteon. Osteo means bone. This is called an osteon. So compact bone in your long bone is made of osteons. 
compact bone in your long bone is made of osteons. All right, we are going to look at these osteons. And in, in other words, we are going to look at compact bone tissue. So I wrapped an osteon in a red circle right here. That is one osteon. There are, of course, many. Osteons are going to resist compression. They're able to do that because they're made of mineralized bone tissue. Now what I see are all these concentric rings. Each of these guys is a ring of mineralized matrix. These rings are concentric, meaning they share the same center. They are known as concentric lamellae. One of these rings. So like this one ring that I'm purpling right now, this one ring is a concentric lamella. Kind of got into two there, but that's okay. These are rings of bone matrix that make up my osteons. Now these are concentric rings, which means they share the same center. The center of each ring, in other words, the center of the osteon itself is this little passageway. And we see lots of them. I got one with a green arrow there. This little passageway each of these is called a central canal. Central because it's in the center. In the center of what? The center of an osteon. It's a canal because it's a passageway. Things go through it. Blood vessels and nerves go through it. By the way, blood is very vascular. Blood is very innervated. Sorry, blood. Bone is very vascular. Bone is very innervated. Lots of blood vessels, lots of nerves. Okay? Running through those central canals. The central canals are surrounded by the concentric lamellae, which are rings of matrix. Hey, bone is a connective tissue. So bone is mostly matrix. This matrix, surprise, surprise, has our favorite matrix protein, collagen fibers, which we know resist tension. Plus, as we mentioned before, it's mineralized. It is calcium phosphate, CaPO4. That mineralization resists compression. Okay, this is all good. This is fantastic. So I want you to look at all of these different osteons. Look at the central canals. Boom, boom, boom. Look at these concentric lamellae. Now, I want to point out what is kind of an issue that I can see, okay? Let's suppose I made three osteons, all right? I'm going to make three osteons. And I'll make that one a little bigger. Boom. Make one more. I'll make four. Yeah, I'm gonna make four. You know what? I'm gonna undo that guy. I hate that guy. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I made three osteons right there. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, one. Ha ha. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. One, two, three. Three osteons. Osteons are circular. I said, look at it. These are all. These guys are circular, more or less. When you pack circles together, you are left over with a little bit of space. But we can't have space in our compact bone. That would weaken it. It wouldn't be compact. So we got to fill that space. I'm going to circle where we've done that. This little bit right here is a little bit between osteons, this little square between four osteons. And there are these tiny little sort of miniature layers of matrix in here. They're called interstitial lamellae. These are layers of bone matrix, so again, collagen, calcium phosphate, that occupy the space 
in between my osteons, which exists because my osteons are cylinders, they're circles. Awesome. This is so good. You guys having a good time out there? Good. I'm so glad. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. All right. Lastly, there are some bigger layers of matrix found at the outside. So there's a lot of matrix right here on the outside of my long bone, also on the inside of my long bone. All of these layers of matrix, so all of these guys are called circumferential lamellae. Circumferential because they go around the circumference, da -da -da, all the way around the circumference of the bone. Hence, circumferential lamellae. All right. Moving right along. Let's do some more stuff. Yeah. Okay. What I want to look at now are these little tiny cavities that seem to be in between the concentric lamellae within an osteon. These are lacunae. You're thinking, hey, wait a minute. We just saw lacunae in hyaline cartilage. That's where the chondrocytes live. Well, lacunae in bone is where we have bone cells called osteocytes. Hey, remember, chondrocytes used to be chondroblasts, which were the makers of the matrix. Same idea here osteocytes, so by the way, these guys over here where I got a blue arrow are representing osteocytes, the actual cells. Then all the other little spaces are representing the lacunae. Now, osteocytes used to be osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are the matrix makers. Osteocytes help m maintain it. Osteocytes are like always measuring the forces on your bone and always communicating where we need to make more bone, make less bone, etc. Okay, what else can we see? What we can also see is a layer of membrane on the inside and outside of my compact bone tissue. So on the inside, by the way, this would be the uh, where you find bone marrow. So in the space, remember we were looking at a long bone and we had cut out a, a wedge. Whoosh, whoosh. Marrow would be in this cavity right here. That's where the marrow would be. And lining that marrow cavity is this membrane, which has got a red arrow in it. It is called the endosteum. Think endo for within and osteum for bone. On the outside, so this guy over here, on the outside of the bone is this thicker, stronger layer made of dense, irregular connective tissue, which we met last time. And this is called the periosteum. Peri meaning around, osteum meaning bone. And this periosteum is going to attach this bone to other bones and to muscles by way of tendons and ligaments. Now, tendons, for example, pull really strongly because muscles are tugging on them. Tendons pull on the periosteum. So the periosteum has to be anchored to the bone. And I see these big collagen fiber bundles, all of these guys, they're called perforating fibers or big collagen bundles, and they anchor the periosteum to the bone. So that when a muscle pulls on a tendon, the tendon pulls on the periosteum and the periosteum pulls on the bone and you move. So, I rotated the model 
to show you the endosteum lying the internal cavity, and this is the periosteum lining the outside. Okay. And this is a longitudinal section. You can still kind of see the osteons and transverse section up here. Now I have a longitudinal section. I see this central canal right here. Next to my central canal, I can see all these concentric lamellae. If you look up here, you can see them at the top, and you can still appreciate how they're concentric rings. I also see lots of lacunae. Lots of lacunae in here as well. Of course, lacunae would be occupied by osteocytes, which were once osteoblasts. All right. Moving right along. Same picture, basically. I've got a central canal right here. Here's a central canal in blue. Here's a central canal right here. Another one. We know in the central canals, we have blood vessels and nerves. But how did they get in there? Well, one way they got in there was through these sideways running canals. So blood vessel will enter and go through the sideways canal to get to the central canal. Here's another one right here. Linking central canals. Here's another one. These sideways, these transverse canals are called perforating canals. All right, so we have not only central canals, we also have perforating canals. Okay, now I have a model of a single osteon. This is the central canal right here. This is the central canal. I see a vein, the the blue guy, the big blue guy, here's a vein, here's an artery, here's a nerve, and central canal is right there. Then I got my rings of matrix, one, two, three, four, five, concentric lamellae, made of mineralized matrix, collagen and calcium phosphate. And I've got my lacunae, these are empty lacunae, and I also see lacunae with osteocytes in them. I'm going to put some orange dots on some osteocytes here. These were once osteoblasts. Now, what's incredible about osteocytes is that there are these living active cells. They need oxygen, nutrients, etc. But stuff can't diffuse through the matrix here. Stuff can't diffuse through the matrix. So luckily, what we have are all these passageways. I'm going to put some purple dots on the passageways. These are passageways that connect lacunae and thus connect osteocytes. These are called canaliculi. The osteocyte has these little arms and legs, these little red guys here, and these little arms and legs connect neighboring osteocytes. There are gap junctions, which we did in lecture, that allow these cells to exchange and stay alive, even though they're buried within this mineralized matrix. By the way, we do also see some interstitial lamellae hanging out up here in the in-between space. Remember, interstitial means in-between, like interstitial fluid. All right. This is good. Here I see some side views of the osteon model. I'm going to let you guys do this part. Can you find all of these things I've listed here? Go ahead and do that. Pause it if you need to. And now I've switched to actual microscopic view of real bone. I want to show you an osteon. I'm going to draw a circle around an osteon right here. This is an osteon. There's a central canal right there. Well, and I see all these little skinny layers of matrix. They're kind of like rings of a tree. Look at that. Those are my concentric lamellae. I also see 
a lot of little black spaces. Those are empty lacuni. I don't actually see any living cells here. They've been removed in the preparation process. If I look in between osteons, I can find some interstitial lamellae where I've made that pink triangle. Cool. Good. Here is an up-close view of a single osteon. I want you to look at this one. I want you to point out, well, the osteon. Like, I'll do the osteon for you. It's right here. Bum, bum, bum. You knew that. But I want you to find the concentric lamellae, lacuni, and caniculi. Okay? All right. Here's another one. Oh, this one's great. This one, we see a central canal in one osteon and another central canal over here. And then I see a passageway running between them. That is going to be a perforating canal. Remember, perforating canals link central canals, allowing the blood vessels and nerves to get through the hard, compact bone tissue. All right, fantastic. Here are some super up close electron micrographs. It was using a super powerful microscope here to show you an osteocyte. This is an osteocyte. Look at these osteocytes. Look at their arms and legs extending from them. Those arms and legs would be in the canaliculi, touching other osteocytes with gap junctions to allow the exchange of nutrients, waste, gases, information, et cetera. All right, folks. There's the last slide here. Just a few more osteocytes. See an osteocyte, bone tissue right there, the matrix right there, osteocyte. We see some canaliculi right there, right there. Beautiful. And with that, guys, we are officially done with connective tissues. Fantastic. I will see you all next time.